Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name is Ron and today I'm going to be showing you the top five struggling plants in my collection. Oh, and I cut my hair. Okay, so the reason why I decided to create this video topic is because it is kind of synonymous with where I am in life right now. I've been super busy with work, both physically and especially mentally up here. A lot of my plants have shown signs of <laughs> death. Not just death, but I mean, I'm still trying to be a good plant parent whenever possible, but I've been trying to take a step back from this whole YouTube thing because it's a lot of work as well. Just setting up my camera and equipment and editing the videos. I just needed to, you know, reevaluate where I am in life right now. So in doing that, I took a one week vacation in Moab, Utah where I saw Delicate Arch at Arches National Park. I went whitewater rafting. I've been to Canyonlands National Park and I've just seen a lot of desert landscape, which I like. Also in Moab, I had the most delicious Thai food ever, which is kind of weird in the small little town. I've had roast duck and like, I've never had roast duck so delicious before. So I've been enjoying nature and trying to recenter myself in my mind. But I also ended up cutting my hair, which I know a lot of you might be very sad about, but I've been thinking about cutting my hair for a while now. Before this whole YouTube thing, I've actually had short hair for like my whole life basically. And I only started to grow it out because I wanted to say that I had long hair once in my life and the pandemic certainly made it easier. I started growing out my hair back in 2019. I don't remember the exact date. That's when my hair was kind of like, sort of like this length, a little bit shorter, but it took a really long time for it to actually be like wearable as long hair. Cause I went through like this awkward stage where it was like, this short or this long and looking at old pictures where my hair was like at this length it looked kind of weird it looked extra weird actually <laughs> but yeah i resisted the urge to cut my hair back then and i kept growing it out kept growing it out until it got to like this length ish where it felt much better like wearing it down instead of a ponytail and like using bobby pins to kind of hold the loose pieces up. But then as soon as the hair got like this length right here to like my shoulders, I started just becoming bored with it, especially with not just bored, but like annoyed with finding hair all over the floor, all over the bathroom, hair in my face, hair in my food, tying my hair up and not getting the man bun right every single time so i think it just brought me additional stress which up to now i don't want a lot of stress so unfortunately because i was going through like a rough time well i wouldn't really consider it rough it's just me just kind of being out of sync with things especially my plants some of my plants have seen stress as well. So when I say that your plants are a reflection of you, that is 100% true, okay? Yeah, I might have some like really pretty thriving plants, but there aren't that many thriving plants here, okay? It still requires a lot of care and a lot of time to, you know, essentially take care of every single plant in here. And I don't recall how many plants there are, but it's almost, I would say 80 plants here. I do have some additional plants at work and downstairs in my living room, but yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. And I know I haven't really been posting lately. I said this before, but I'm gonna try to post 
videos more often. I'm gonna try to upload videos on a more regular basis. I'm gonna try to, okay, because I miss you guys and I'm sure you miss me too. I know you miss my longer hair more, which by the way, I kind of was trying to go for like the BTS look, you know, you know what I mean? You know who they are? The Korean boy band. I didn't want to go too short because I do like having some length of hair to like play with. But my hair is naturally like super, super straight. And usually when I had this hair back then, I would like use a curling iron or a flat iron to like give it some wave so it doesn't look too flat and boring. But this time I ended up getting a perm. So that's why there's this like wave action going on. And I really like it and I hope you like it too. Anyway, with plant number one, this is in no particular order and this is not the extent of all of my struggling plants. This is just what is probably the most struggling, okay? Number one is my string of pearls. Mind you, this is like my second pot of string of pearls, um, the non-variegated one. I've had this one sitting on this shelf up here, which is directly against my south facing window. And I could never really figure out its care, but I think I know why. And it's because in this pot, I found mealybugs, I think, which is crazy because I've never had a, a mealybug infestation before. I was looking at this plant one day because it never really grew. It just suddenly stopped growing like a couple of months ago. And I, I just thought, you know, maybe, actually there's no excuse. <laughs> there was a lot more pearls in here, some even trailing, but I decided to cut all of them off because they looked very sickly. And about two weeks ago, almost all of the pearls in this pot have like become wrinkly. And whenever I would water the pot again, it would never plump back up. So let me give you a closer look. There is one propagation of the variegated string of pearl in there. So as you can see, right, the pearls are wrinkly. So I am treating it with systemic granules and hopefully it bounces back. I am keeping it in my greenhouse cabinet here. So, I mean, I don't see any new signs of growth but I really hope I got rid of the mealybugs. I tried to get them all with alcohol on a, uh, on a little Q-tip. And like I tried to get into all of the little crevices in between each, each pearl. But yeah, sad, re hopefully recovering string of pearls right there. Okay, plant number two. <laughs> This is my variegated English ivy. I think this is my third pot of English ivy. I had another non-variegated English ivy, which totally died. I had managed to save a couple of strands and propagated those, but even those died. And then I thought I like nailed down the care. So I ended up getting another variegated string, string, variegated English ivy, which is not this one. It had different like variegation pattern on, on the leaves, but that one died as well. This one, I don't know if you recall in my previous videos, but the vines end up becoming like this long, several feet long. And then one day, I think I underwatered it one week to the point where the bottom leaves ended up becoming crispy and brown. And then that just immediately like took over the whole plant. So I chopped all the vines off. Fortunately, it threw out these two vines right here that still have some green left. So I'm hoping it'll make a comeback. I don't think it has a pest infestation because I'm looking here very closely. I'm acting like I have like microscopic vision, which I don't. I believe it is underwatering because 
This pot is like very, very light more often than not. And every time it's light, I look at the bottom here and I see like super dried roots here, which tells me that the plant is like constantly searching for more moisture down here, which is sad because there's no moisture to be found. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to keep, them, keep a very close eye on this one. It was sitting on the top shelf right here behind me, not really getting a lot of um, artificial light because the light that I have up here sits lower than that shelf. I might end up putting this inside of my cabinet as well. Maybe, we'll see. I have a feeling this actually appreciates direct sun because none of the ivies that I had before, um, I've never really placed them in direct sun. It was always like a medium light situation. So I might try that with this plant. I don't know. Okay, so the next plant is my Anthurium forgetii. It looks sad, doesn't it? I thought it was making a comeback with this leaf right here. This is the newest leaf, but all of a sudden it just stopped growing. So the thing with most Anthuriums in general, when they push out a new leaf, they start very, very small and then give it a few weeks, that small leaf will become very, very big, which is what happened to this one and almost happened to this one until it started developing like yellowing up here on the top of this leaf. As you can see, which I thought it was due to underwatering, but when I repotted the plant because I really wanted to take a look at the roots. It was in fact overwatering because there was a good amount of root rot. So what happened was this was a healthy leaf and then it was growing until the root rot became too much and was unable to bring moisture up to the leaf. And then the leaf said, hey, I can't grow anymore. So I'm gonna die off. I think I saved it in time and that's why the yellowing has kind of stopped even though I think it's gonna yellow a bit more because as you can see it pushed out a new leaf right there so yes this has been a struggling plant but it's also making a comeback and I think it's gonna make a strong comeback because it was in soil but I replaced the soil with a bunch of sphagnum moss and pumice. So it's a lot more airy. And I guess the soil mixture that I used previously was too dense. I should have threw in a lot more pumice in there. So yeah, I'm crossing my fingers extra hard because I don't want this plant to die because it is a very pretty plant. Okay, plant number four is this Oncidium tigroides. This was one of my newer plants in, what video was it? It was a Equigenera pop-up shopping video here in Las Vegas. And I had placed an order of five plants online and then picked those plants up at their pop-up here in downtown Las Vegas. This was one of them. When I picked up this plant, it was like almost dead. There were some yellowing leaves, a lot of root rot, and I told myself that I was going to revive this plant. And I think I lied to myself. I tried to, you know, like I put a lot of airy substrate in here. There is a bunch of sphagnum moss. There is even a layer of biostratum, which a lot of people use to propagate cuttings very successfully. It looks like, how do I describe this? It looks like very, very tiny balls of leca, but it's black. I think it's supposed to be used in like aquarium and aquarium plants. Like aquariums and aquaponics go hand in hand. They're kind of the same concept. So I thought this was gonna like do wonders for this 
revival. But what ended up happening was there was an infestation of fungus gnats. This was like super infested. So I put a layer of mosquito bits, just a tiny bit. And I think that killed off the eggs and larvae in there. However, it's not really the best situation for like the roots because I don't know, I feel like it's too waterlogged now because there is a layer of sagging moss at the top and the roots are not very long either. So they're kind of just sitting in that layer. I will take it out and then show you the roots, but I do see like a new growth in here. And hopefully you can see. I don't know. I hope it's a new growth. It looks like it is. I kind of gave up hope with this one because other than that new sign of growth right there, I mean, it's continued to lose growth. It's continued to shrivel up and just not look very presentable. So I have it like tucked away here on the bottom shelf behind me, hoping to see like new growth one day. And we're kind of almost there. So this is another one of the plants that I'm gonna be keeping a very close eye on because the flowers on this orchid, it's technically an orchid, they have like stripes on the flower petals and it reminds me of a tiger. So I do wanna see flowers in this one day. Doesn't look like it right now, but if you have any tips on how to care for this one, let me know. Or on any of the plants that you see today, cause I could really use those tips. Plant number five is my plumeria tree that I got from Home Depot, I believe. This plant has, I don't know, it's like a roller coaster with this one because it started off at like this height. Actually, you can kind of see where the new growth started to come in. This is when I first got it from Home Depot and then it shot out this much of growth. I think I got this plant about a year ago. They say plumerias really like water and that is true with this one. I probably would have to water it like once every five days or so. The leaves will start to droop and that's how you know when to water the plant. But I've always had issues with this one because the leaves, the first issue actually was the leaves were always coming in. Oh, let me give you a better look. So yeah, every time the new leaves would come in, they would always come in like curly like this or like this, very deformed. And I knew that was an issue because when I first got the plant, all of the leaves were like flat and like vibrant green, okay? So I think back then the issue was, I think it was just underwatering. I didn't realize that this plant likes to drink a lot of water, so I believe I treated it as like all my other houseplants. Um, I would only water it like once every week and a half, I would say. And then moving on into winter, probably once every other week. So I think that was the issue with the curling leaves. But now that I'm watering it more frequently, the leaves had got, have gotten a lot more flat and like more rigid and vibrant green. The second issue that I'm facing now with this one is unfortunately aphids. I believe they're aphids. They're really, really tiny, but I think they're characteristic of aphids. Let me show you another struggling plumeria that I have right here. This one was doing <laughs> fine until I chopped off all of the leaves because this one was more infested than this one. I could actually see the orchids, orchids. <laughs> I could actually see the aphids like crawling up and down this um, stem right here. Whereas on this one, I couldn't really see them anymore, which makes me kind of scared because I hope they didn't really transfer to all of my other plants. They seem fine right now, but I'm starting to treat my plants again with systemic granules. So, and I'm trying to get my hands on liquid systemic. So it makes it easier for me to water like almost hundred plants. Plumerias in general are very hardy. So even though I cut off all of the leaves, it will continue to give me more leaves. Hopefully healthier and healthier leaves. I just need to manage this pest problem a little bit better. So this and this plant is number five. Um, let me just show you an example of leaf damage resulting from those 
stupid aphids. So the leaves have like this, these spots like all over the entire leaf, okay? And it looks like they would attack the top because the underside actually looks pretty pristine, which is weird because I've never seen like crawly things on the top. I don't know. I guess they're really attracted to the sap that's in the, in the Pomeria trees because when you cut into them or when you break a branch off, it leaks like this white substance, which is actually poisonous. So don't let your dogs eat this plant. Um, if you've ever propagated syngoniums before, it's kind of the same thing. I guess I've never really had an aphid infestation before, so I don't really know what to look out for. I just know that leaf damage is due to, especially this with like spots all over the place, it's due to some kind of leaf eating pest. So it's happening to all of the mature leaves on here, it's happening to all of the newer leaves on here, which is sad. Um, I think I'm just gonna cut off all of the leaves on here just so that it has like a clean slate to build off of again. I don't know. I just want to cry. Oh, there's soil mites in here, guys. That's another thing. I've never really 100% got rid of my soil mite problem. I have been using diatomaceous earth, which helped a ton on a lot of my other plants, but I'm not really a fan of diatomaceous earth because for one, it only works when it's dry and you kind of have to force yourself to bottom water because you, if you put that on the top like you're supposed to and then you water it in, that like white powder and when wet can actually become very gummy and then hold on to too much moisture for too long and then start to like suffocate the roots of your plant. And that actually happened to another plant, my uh, jewel orchid, which I will say probably makes honorable mention in this top five struggling plant video. Let me show you what that looks like. But yeah, this is the plumeria tree. Okay, welcome, honorable mention, Jewel Orchid. This is the original plant that basically fell off from this plant. Luckily, when I first bought the plant, I could see signs of like offshoots and this is what has resulted from that. There's a lot of baby jewel orchids in there. So I'm not too worried about that. But this part was like the mother plant. Okay, so there, there was this one, which was growing up like this. And then it had a lot of like bare stem kind of laying on top of the soil with like roots underneath that. And that bare stem was pushing out growth. So that bare stem is still in this pot with all of these offshoots. So I think this pot is still doing just fine. After that bare stem was this plant, which in between that bare stem and then like this top growth, it had like shriveled up. And so I cut that off and removed like one or two leaves. And then I'm trying to propagate this top cutting, if you will, into this pot. So I'm hoping it bounces back. Oh yeah, back to the topic of the diatomaceous earth. This had a lot of diatomaceous earth on top um, and me not being really consistent with my watering. Sometimes I would water, I would bottom water this plant and then other times I would water it up on top, which was a bad idea because the powder of the diatomaceous earth ended up absorbing the water and then when it's wet, it becomes like very gummy to the point where that gummy substance got stuck to like that part of the main stem and it held on to the moisture for so long to the point where it just basically rotted the stem so i removed all of that gunk off and replaced it with fresh new soil up on top and then i put this top cutting into this one this pot here and i put this right in front of the window because jewel orchids don't they're not like your typical orchid. I don't know why they call them orchids in the first place, but supposedly they can thrive both in humid and not so humid environments. So I'm 
trying to watch this one with a very close eye as an experiment to see if it will thrive outside of my greenhouse cabinet because the plant has been originally in my cabinet but as you can see there's growth in there a tiny piece of leaf popping out so hopefully it continues to grow first of all it needs to push out roots which this piece doesn't have any so I don't know, crossing my fingers on this. Well, that's about it for this video, guys. I'm gonna call this my comeback video. So hopefully after this video, I'll be posting more frequently and more content in general so because this is the new face of my youtube channel okay new hair which i hope you guys like because i like it so yeah those are the top five plus the honorable mention jewel orchid you know if you collect as many plants as i do or if you have even more and every single one of those plants are thriving you know kudos to you because i know how much work is involved in maintaining every single pot, every single leaf, every single stem, every single root system, every single propagation. It takes a lot of TLC, which I think I, ooh, which I think I still do have in me. So I'm gonna continue to take care of my plants, because without my plants, you guys have no content from me. So let's keep it going. I do have some content like lined up for me to film. For example, I have taken some propagations. They've been sitting in water for a couple of weeks now, which they do need to be repotted into soil. So that will be very exciting. I'm also now inspired to do a top five thriving plant video, just to kind of balance things out. There's the bad, but there's also the good, right? Hopefully I get back into the groove of things, right Bia? Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please do hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't yet already, plantscribe. Wait, plantscribe. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.